time for another pop day with Mumbles and Dancer. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Mumbles and Dancer Pop Day. Today's episode of Mumbles and Dancer Pop Day, I'm talking about collars and how you can not only size your own collar, but the different types of collar and which type will probably be best for you. You interested? Well, then stay tuned because here it all comes. So, guys, today we're going to talk about how to size your dog's collar properly. Guys, it's very important that you note that what you're trying to size is not what your dog's collar size is going to be in six months from now. It's what their collar size is right now. So this means you may end up having to buy multiple collars, but it will keep your dog from being able to slip out of their collar. So you're going to want to size it for what their neck is right now. Now, to do this, there's two different ways. First, you can take a shoelace, or you can, if you have one of those tape measures that you can wrap around things, you can use that. I prefer obviously the tape measure, it makes it a little bit easier, but you can use a shoelace if need be. So guys, what you're gonna to wanna to do is, you're gonna to wanna to take the shoelace or the measuring tape and wrap it around your dog's neck between the ears and the collarbone where the dog will have his collar. So you're just gonna to wanna to measure that, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get a good measurement on that, and you're gonna to wanna to add two inches to that, two inches. Now I'm gonna explain why in a second, but that's how you size your dog's collar. Now whatever size you get is the size you wanna buy. Now guys, when it comes to actually receiving the collar, that two inches is gonna come into play. So when you put the dog's collar on, obviously you have to size it and stuff and make sure it fits. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is adjust it so that you can fit two fingers underneath the dog's collar. This prevents it from being too tight on them or cutting off their ear or anything like that. It's nice and loose on them, but not loose enough that they can slip it off their neck. So you're gonna to wanna to be able to fit two fingers under it. After you finish that, your dog has his new collar and you have a collar that you like. It's that simple, guys. But guys, how do you know what kind of collar to buy? Guys, I'm gonna explain some of the main different types of collars that you can get, and I'm gonna give my recommendation on what type of collar you should actually get at the end of this. So let's start by going with the generalized collars, which are the nylon collars or the leather collars. Now, Dancer has a leather collar. It's a nice leather collar. Leather is a little bit more expensive usually than nylon, but they are both seen as kind of entry-level collars because they're just collars and they're very adjustable. They're not custom fit or anything. Now, these collars usually are, are pretty sturdy for the most part, but they can get a little bit on the dirty side. And when you wash them, they do not always wash 100% correctly. So that is our main con with these collars is that the washing process can be a little bit stressed and they can start to show wear after some time. Especially with the leather collar, if you're taking it on and off for a bath all the time, you may notice that the leather is actually getting strained and eventually it may get brittle and break off. So they are the entry level collars. You're probably gonna find most collars are this type, but they are not the only collar out there. So for our second type of collar that I wanna mention to you guys today, I am going to mention the smart collars with chips. Now this is the kind of collar that basically has a GPS built into it. So as long as your dog is wearing that collar, you're gonna know where they are basically at all times. Now the main con for these collars are they're expensive and some of them even actually have monthly monitoring fees that you have to pay in order to keep that service going on your dog's GPS collar. So that's the main con, but it is a good collar if you have a dog that for some reason gets lost a lot or you do a lot of traveling with your dog, you wanna make sure they don't get lost. That's the kind of collar you're probably gonna to wanna to think about investing in. So guys, the third type of collar that I'm gonna mention is LED slash reflective collars. Now these are collars that either have built-in LED lights in them or they have reflective material on it. So if you're somebody that walks your dog at night or you know you go for a jog at night or whatever, it actually lights up so that people can see your dog so that you know no accidents or anything happen. Now guys, the cons for this are obviously reflective material, you can't take it off. So it's gonna be flashing all the time and reflecting all the time. And with LED lights, there is times where you're gonna actually have to charge that collar because it does run on battery power. So there will be times when your dog will have to go without a collar on unless you have another collar. So they're good collars, but they do have that con attached to them. So guys, the fourth type of collars that I wanna to mention today are waterproof collars. Now guys, these collars are generally more expensive but if you live in a wet climate or your dog does a lot of swimming or you go boating or whatever on the water a lot, you may wanna think about a waterproof collar because unlike other collars, these collars dry rather quickly and they are 100% waterproof so you don't have to worry about them wearing out or anything like that. They dry quickly and they're good to go. Now, the cons for these collars as I've already mentioned is first off, they are more expensive. They're a little bit more bulky. There's usually less designs for these type of collars so 
that is kind of the con you're trading off of if you're getting a water type collar. While it is great with you know washing and all that other stuff and, and keeping care of, it is more expensive and it doesn't have as many designs. So that is our cons for on that collar. So guys, now there's one last category of collar that I'm gonna talk about, but I already wanna mention right off the bat, I don't 100% agree with using these type of collars. There's the shock collar, there is the prong collars, there's the choke chains, and there is the maritime collar. Now, the maritime, or I don't know if I'm even saying that right, is a collar that actually does have a good purpose and I can understand using it. So I don't wanna group it fully in this category, but I'm gonna mention it here because it does have a chain attached to it and it can be a potential choking hazard. I don't agree with collars that can cause pain to dogs. I think there's better ways to correct dogs. I know some dogs may need very harsh correction, but anything that can cause a dog pain, I'm just not for. So maritime collars are for if you're going to act, if your dog is slipping out of their collar, they're, it makes it so your dog can't get out of them, but they can choke on these collars. So unless it's absolutely necessary that you have to have a collar that is maritime, I wouldn't recommend any of these collars at all. I just, I don't agree with them. There's also some other specialty type collars out there. Collars that vibrate for deaf dogs and collars that do this and that. But these are the main type of collars that I'm mentioning today. And now I'm gonna tell you what I would recommend that you get. Guys, here's the deal. There's no perfect collar out there. It's all based on choice. Maybe you like the looks of a leather collar like we do with Dancer. That's fine. Maybe you have a dog that constantly somehow breaks out of your yard Afraid they're gonna get lost. You want that GPS collar. Maybe you have a dog that loves to swim and get in the water all the time, and every weekend you're getting you're getting in the water, so you want one of those waterproof collars. Maybe you go out at night a lot because you like to get your exercise in. Maybe you want then an LED collar. Maybe you want multiple collars. Guys, there's no rule that says you can only have one type of collar. My recommendation to you is research the collars, check them out, make an informed decision. And there's no wrong answer, no matter what anyone says. It is based on personal preference. So guys, that is my recommendation. Get the collar that suits you best and that is comfortable for your dog. Again, I will not recommend any collar that causes your dog pain. Don't agree with them. I don't think you should use them. So please do not. But beyond that, any collar that you guys want to get is free game as long as your dog is comfortable in it. And that's my recommendation to you. So guys, now we're going to go get dancer and we're going to finish up this video. As with every week, guys, it is time for our favorite section, our pop in play. We can see this cute little guy have all sorts of fun. And here he is. Anyways, guys, this has been another episode of Mumbles and Dancer Updates. I want to thank you guys all so much for joining us. Please smack that subscribe button, smack the like button, and smack all those buttons. Dancer wants to thank you guys all so much for watching. And guys, just have a great day, everyone. Stay safe out there, and we will see you guys all next week. Anyways, guys, this is Mumbles and Dancer signing off. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.